Uh, welcome to the Jelly Sprites uh, demo video. I'm just going to quickly run over what Jelly Sprites is and how you can use it in your Unity game. So Jelly Sprites is basically a 2D soft body physics system. It's not quite a true soft body physics system in that uh, it's not accurately modeling each and every vertex of the source polygon. Uh, instead it uses an approximation, so it has a small set of colliders and rigid bodies uh, linked by springs. And the movement of these, uh, these colliders is then uh, translated to the rendered mesh of the sprite. So as the bodies uh, compress and contort and bounce around, that movement is then reflected in the, uh, the visible sprite mesh. So if we open up Unity, uh, once you've imported Jelly Sprites into your project, you can just go Game Object, Create Other, Jelly Sprite, Unity Jelly Sprite, and that creates a new uh, Jelly Sprite in the hierarchy. So currently this isn't uh, isn't really visible. That's because we haven't associated the sprite with it. Uh, you can see an inspector over here where they have the sprite field. So if we just drag this uh, blue blob sprite in there, there you can see we have our jelly sprite. Uh, so in the scene view, uh, you can see we've got our sprite, the, uh, the blue triangles, uh, the visible mesh. Um, and if we just turn off that mesh, you can see these green uh, circles. The green circles represent the, uh, the positions of the colliders and the rigid bodies that uh, the jelly spray will create when it is uh, initialized. So if we just shrink down the size of those spheres a little bit, you can see a bit more clearly what's happening here. Jelly sprites comes from a number of uh, body configurations. So this is the circular configuration, which is fairly self-explanatory. You have a ring of uh, colliders and rigid bodies in a circle around a central point. Uh, the other options are rectangle, triangle, and grid. With certain ones such as the circle, you can uh, alter the complexity of them. So you can increase the number of colliders in the ring. So just increase this value, and you have uh, more, more colliders in the, uh, the circumference of the circle. For the grid option, you can also change the number of rows and number of columns. So which configuration you use is uh, up to you. They all have uh, different behaviors and properties. Uh, it's worth having a play around and seeing which one uh, looks best, which one suits the sort of movement that you're after. Uh, the circle one's quite good for modeling uh, circular objects, obviously. Um, this will compress in a kind of ball type manner. So if you've got a circular sprite, that's probably the one you want to go for. Um, triangle is quite good for, because uh, it has such a wide base, it's quite stable, but this top point will bounce around um, so it gives a nice kind of organic feel to uh, a kind of jelly, more jelly-like feel than the other ones. Um, the grid is obviously more complex due to the increased number of colliders, uh, but therefore more realistic. Um, you probably want to avoid this if you're working on mobile devices, just because it's going to suck up a lot of CPU time if you have too many colliders and springs and interactions going on. So if we go back to the circle array, um, turn back on the mesh renderer, and we're almost ready to launch this. Um, one more thing, you can change the scale of the jelly sprites using uh, these values down here. So currently you see we've got a circular sprite, but it's slightly elliptical, it's a bit squashed on the uh, vertical axis. So if we just adjust the collider scale, we can make the sprite more accurately represent the shape of it. Um, let's just put the collider radius back up to its default value. Um, and the last thing we need is a floor for the jelly sprite to interact with. So I'll just drag this sprite in here. So this is going to be our, our floor. If we just add a 2D rigid body to that and a uh, box collider, let's set it as a kinematic object so it doesn't move around. Um, and let's put the jelly sprite in the jelly sprite layer. Okay, we should be ready to go. So if we just launch the game now, we should see the jelly sprite fall out of the sky, hit the ground, and then squash it into form and bounce around. So there we are. Um, just for comparison, if we drag the original sprite in, that's the original sprite. So you can see the jelly sprite is kind of compressing and bending. You can actually see this on the mesh here. You can see the kind of uh, vertex points deforming. So if I just drop it again, there you are, you can see it bouncing around. Um, if we turn off the actual mesh renderer, you can see what the rigid bodies are doing. So if we just drop that once more, you can see them kind of compressing and bouncing around. Uh, 
and influencing the sprite. So um, yeah, once you have your Jelly Sprite set up, you can then tweak things like the spring stiffness, uh, gravity, anything you'd normally be able to tweak on a kind of uh, a rigid body or a spring. Uh, the spring stiffness is good for kind of altering how your Jelly Sprite reacts uh, under its own weight. So currently it's fairly rigid, it kind of bounces around a bit, but it maintains its shape. If we reduce that to say one, you can see it kind of collapses a lot more. Uh, could probably do even more. Yeah, so, so there, it, it'll just hit the ground and kind of collapse under its own weight, which may or may not be what you want it to do. Um, again, it's, it's completely up to you how you set that up. Um, another useful thing is the attach point system. So using the attach point system, you can uh, parent objects to the Jelly Sprite and they will then move around um, as the vertex points do. So for instance, if we had this Jelly Sprite and we wanted to create some eyes, just put some eyes up there. Um, you can now go to Jelly Sprite, set the number of attach points to one, drop the eyes into this field here. And then if we play again, you can see the eyes now bob around um, as you'd expect them to. So that's good if you want to kind of create a little creature or something, uh, you want things to realistically track what the rest of the uh, sprite mesh is doing. Uh, you can use the transform, sorry, the attach point system. Um, yeah, that's about it really. Um, the rest of it is just uh, configuring things like mass, uh, gravity, spring stiffness, to try and get the jelly sprites kind of uh, bob around and react as you want. So there's a lot of uh, scope for tweaking things. Um, but yeah, it can be quite satisfying. If you have a look at the demo project that's included, I've set up some kind of example ones using the various types of uh, colliders that you have, and they kind of bounce around randomly and you can see them deforming. Some of them are stiffer than others, some of them are smaller than others, some of them have more mass than others. Um, so yeah, that's a good kind of indication of the type of things that you can get the system to do. Um, one thing to note, there are a couple of small bugs in the Unity 2D code at the moment. Um, you can't actually set the mass on an object from scripts. Uh, this is a known issue, I've reported it to Unity, they've fixed it and confirmed its problem. So uh, the next update should resolve that. Um, there's also another issue where um, the way Jelly Sprites work is that these colliders can't collide with one another, because obviously otherwise you know, they wouldn't be able to intersect with each other, it would just explode in a kind of horrible mess. Um, in the 3D system, you can turn off collisions between individual colliders on a um, kind of manually. Um, that functionality isn't in the, um, the 2D system just yet. It's been asked for in Unity Answers, so hopefully it'll be implemented fairly soon. Um, but as a sort of workaround for now, if you go to Project Settings, Physics 2D, you need to make sure that whatever layer the jelly sprites are using doesn't collide with itself, um, and that will yeah that will make them pay properly. So if you have downloaded this and you're getting the sprite behaving weirdly, you'll actually see an, um, an error in the console saying the layer isn't is set to collide with itself. Please turn this off, or else it won't work. Um, hopefully, once Unity fix that in the 2D system, then I can just introduce an update, and you won't need to you won't have to have that requirement. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, I hope people find this useful. Uh, feel free to contact me on the Unity forums or via Twitter if you've got any questions. Thanks.